I'm Brett Wilhelm and we're here today to talk about just how easy it is to create compelling content right here on the Mac. Today we're going to be creating a photo slideshow, maybe set it to some music, all from within Keynote, one of the programs available from Apple in the iLife and iWork suites. First thing we'll need to do is open up Keynote. And the first decision we're, we're faced with here is to choose a theme for our presentation. Now, because this is a photo slideshow, I like to keep the background relatively simple so it doesn't detract from the photos themselves. Here, I'm going to select black, select choose, and that's going to apply a black theme, a basic black theme, to the first slide. Now, because this is a photo slideshow, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to move our window up a little bit here, and I'm going to select the first textual based theme content here and just hit delete and select the other one and hit delete to get rid of that. We won't be needing it. And the next thing I'm going to do is to save ourselves some time, I'm going to take advantage of a new feature in Keynote called Smart Builds. Smart Builds allow us to uh, add many photos to a single slide without having to create new slides for each additional photo. I'm going to come up under Smart Builds here and from the menu I'm going to select Flip as our default transition. Selecting Flip adds a new Smart Build to the center of our, our slide here. I can just move this up into position. I can drag the lower right hand corner to make it fill a little bit more of the slide. Releasing it when I'm ready. And then to make sure it's aligned in the center of the slide, I can just simply hit Control click and I can go to Align Objects and select Center. That's just going to make sure that our Smart Build is in the center of the slide. Now the next step is to add actual images to our Smart Build. Now one of the nice things about the entire iLife and iWork suite is that other programs on the Apple platform like Aperture and iPhoto for your images or iTunes and GarageBand for your music, they automatically share their media with programs within the iLife and iWork suite. I can just come up here to the Media Browser button and select that. That's going to make my Media Browser appear. And you'll see listed under the Photos tab, uh, Aperture is the first thing listed. I'm going to click the Disclosure Triangle and I'm going to scroll down to the Aperture project I wanted to showcase today. That's a recent cross-country championship that I'd photographed. Now I can scroll through the individual thumbnails or I can just go back to the top since I'm going to be showing all 24 images in the project. I can select the first image and then hit Apple A or Command A and then I'm going to click and drag all 24 images from the media browser and I can drag that directly onto the Smart Build or I can put it into the Smart Build pane down here it's going to drop the image where it says drop image here and it's going to take a second to assemble all of those images. Once it's done importing, I can use the arrows to scroll back through, make sure all the images have come in and they're in the order I want them to be. I can select on the first image here and if I want to preview how the slideshow is going to look at this point, I just need to come back up to the play button here. I'm going to click play and the slideshow will appear. So that's looking alright, but I've decided I don't really like the flip transition and I'd like to change it to something else. So I'm going to hit escape and I can come back to my smart builds menu with my smart build still selected down here and I'm just going to switch it to dissolve. That's going to change the default transitions between between each image in the smart build and when I go back and I hit play again we'll now see that a new default transition is applied and I'm liking that transition a lot better. But let's take it one step further and maybe add some music to our slideshow here. Uh, from the same media browser I can come over to the audio tab and I see that both GarageBand library and the iTunes library are displayed and click on the disclosure triangle next to iTunes and I'm going to scroll down to some music I have uh, selected here because this is a running race you really can't go wrong with good old chariots of fire so I have a edit of chariots of fire I'd like to use I just click on that and I drag it right onto my slide 
and you'll see a little audio icon appear on the slide. Now this is not going to show up when the slideshow actually plays. It's just to signify that it's attached to this slide. So now when I hit play, I should have a slideshow with some music attached. Now I'm liking that all right. And I'm just manually advancing the slides right now. But maybe I'd like to add a automatic transition based on a certain amount of time. I can hit escape. What I'll need to do is open up my document inspector with the inspector button up here. And I can come over to the presentation under document. And I can set this to self-playing. And we don't have any builds in ours, but we can set our transition. Oh, let's set it maybe to two seconds. Now when we come back to preview our slideshow, we should have some transitions automatically built in based on a two second time sequence. Now I can adjust that however I'd like, but that looks pretty good. One last thing I'd like to change here though, is that you'll notice that the slides are appearing fairly small on my laptop monitor. Now this will work well if I'm going to be projecting it on a digital projector as the default resolution of the slide right now is 1024 by 768 as you see here in the document inspector. Now that works pretty well for most slide projectors these days but if I'm going to show it right here on my laptop which I intend to do I can come down here under my slide size and I can choose something larger, like 1680 by 1050. That's the default resolution of my laptop screen. Selecting that slide size will take a second to change the slide size right here in Keynote. You'll see that the image has automatically increased in size to fit the new slide size. And it's, it's kind of disappearing out of my window here. To fix that, I can just go under View, go down to Zoom, and select fit in window. Now that looks pretty good but you will see there's still a large amount of black space around the image. I can again select my smart build or the image itself and I can just move it to maximize the size a little bit here selecting the lower right hand corner and bringing it down and I just add a little bit of black space again the audio icon will not appear in the final slideshow and let's just run through the entire slideshow at this point. I'm going to press play, and we're just going to sit back and see how this looks. happy with the timing. If I wanted to adjust any of the duration, I could do so. Some of the auto transitions, but everything's looking pretty good and it's timing out against the music all right. I can also go back to my smart build pane and I can make adjustments to the order if I see something that's out of order, but Right now, I'm, I'm liking how this is all coming together. It's just chronological through the two races of the day. All right. So I liked how that looks. Uh, the last step I need to do is just to save the keynote presentation. I can choose Save As. And for handy reference, I'm just going to save it right here on my desktop. I'm going to call it Cross Country. Select Save. And that's going to create a keynote document with all of the images, the music, and the slideshow preferences built right in.